And so my ceremony, I set up an altar on my altar. I don't put anything on the altar that, you know, I don't put things that look cool or, you know, Egyptian statues I got in a, um, in a store, you know, it's on my altar. It's very specific things, many things from the tomb of the fire God, which I have, which goes on my altar. I use certain wild flowers, which is part of the ceremony. Dishitu likes wild flowers. So it makes him feel you. I use a certain kind of copal incense. I only use candles that are made out of Bela de Cera, pure beeswax candles. They got to be pure with no fragrance, no nothing. All that will offend. The room is completely closed off. I do my ceremonies either with very few people or by myself. So the clean sisterhoods of the region where I do them in the Masateka, they sit vigil on me, but not in the room, outside the room. They, they, but they stay up all night watching over me. I'm, I'm, I owe it all to the clean sisters. They're, they're the ones who keep the, have kept the lid on everything. Those ladies, they're fantastic. They're amazing. And they knew of cleanliness thousands of years before the Europeans even dreamed of it. Um, and before the ceremony, I get into a space, I calm down, I ready myself. Then right before twilight, that moment that indigenous people say there's an actual moment in the forest. So you gotta be in the forest to know it. When the animals of day go to sleep and the animals of night wake up. So there's one moment where the animals of day tuck themselves in and those of night have yet to squawk. And it's at the forest for just a few moments. Every night goes absolutely silent at that moment. And that's the moment that I light my candle. And then I crawl, I always crawl to my altar to show humility. I crawl to my altar. I'm clean. I have bathed. I have purged myself. I have fasted. I do all those things. I do not eat. I do, I stick to the old time religion. And, um, and then when I come to my altar, I ask the blessings of Grandfather Fire Weiwei Teotl because you got to go through his flame to get to everything else. He's the old God. He's the fire God. So he, he has to give you passage to get through. So, of course, I bring him gifts that I know he would like, and I do that. And when I do that, I'll start out, and I'll do a slight chant, and that's the other difference. These plant languages are based on tonality. So you can't, you may have a beautiful singing voice and sing Catan or folk songs. And that's all fantastic. I love that stuff. But that's not what these plant languages are about. That's what those people who are doing that are about, which is great if you're doing it for yourselves. In this stuff, you got to set the tonality. And what I mean by that is, it's not a chromatic scale. So when you start, I'll ask for the blessing of the Lord of the mountain, of the lady of the waters, of the Lord of the mountain, Chico Nindo. And I will ask them and I'll do, and I'll give them cacao because cacao is their toshqua, is their money. That's, that's their blessing. And I put cacao on the altar and I have artifacts that have been taken out of tombs that are very ancient. And the tribes keep them for me specifically for my rituals. And typically when I do them, before I start, I left that out. The Danzels, the virgins of the village, they carry all the stuff up to where I'm doing the ceremony. I don't touch it. Nobody does except them. And they lay out everything. And they sing when they come to do that. And then I... Um, I will do my first chant and a, a little taste here out of context, but it's a I explain who I am. I talk to him. And, and I do that and I converse with them and then I stop. 
And then in pairs, I lay out the DC2 and they always travel in pairs. So their journey isn't lonely to the world of the dead. It's respect. And if I can, the, the true traditional of the bee of the Americas is a tiny little black bee about this big. And it makes a perfectly clear honey. It's the most amazing honey. And if you eat that honey with them, it, 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 it go, they like it. it go, you, it's like, mm, this is good. This works. So I eat a little honey with them. And then at that point, they give you the chills or make you groggy a little bit. And I laid down on a patate with my blanket uh, and the altar's there. And then with a flower top, I put out the candle with a flower top and I lay there and I wait for it to happen. And typically what happens is maybe I'll feel really good with warm colors. Maybe I'll see um, geometric designs and crazy stuff, but I don't get hung in it. I just let it move. I don't go, wow, that stuff. And ultimately I will hear a distant breeze in the trees very far away and I'll hear the elements of nature start changing outside and I've bolted all the doors shut all the windows no one can come in I don't do it just out in the forest that's very dangerous to do it that way people say they do it I don't nobody I know does it that way you know even when you're out with a tribe in a grotto doing ayahuasca in the deep Amazon there are people watching you you're not running through the woods you get yourself killed doing that right? Um, or I would anyway. And I wait to hear the spirit that rides the wind, the Chico Nindo, which is the Mazatec name for Quetzalcoatl. I listen for its approach. And as it approaches, that wind fills me up and lifts me. And I become like a puppet. I'm literally, I'll stand up like a puppet and it'll move me in ways like a puppet. It, all I got to do is let go and it will move me the way it wants me to dance. That is the ghost dance. It moves you. You do not direct the dance. The wind and what rides the wind directs your dance. And with that wind, it'll come, it'll circle the hut. Sometimes wind, wind, wind serpents will come through holes and the thing and all. You'll hear it whistling around outside and then you will sense a presence and that presence is the being of Dishitu. Now I call that being Dishitu, but Dishitu is not that being's name. I cannot say that being's name. So I use the name of the plant that can bring you to that being because I'm not allowed to say the name of that being. So that being comes and it hides in the shadows. And when it comes and it hides in the shadows, um, when I was young, it would first talk in its archaic, archaic dialect, which is not Masatek. That's a misnomer. When people come to the States and do ceremonies for the new age and all, and they sing, they typically sing actually Catholic folk songs in Masatek because they do not know the ancient songs. But Dishitu does not that. So Dishitu in the old days would first speak in the archaic language then it would speak in Masatek, then it would speak in Spanish. And sometimes, you know, 50 years ago, it would speak to me in English somewhat, but it's been a long time since it's spoken to me in English or Spanish for that matter at this point. And sometimes people tell me, the Masatek people tell me it will speak to them in Masatek, but it usually speaks to me in its language. And in its language, words that are, prevalent in standard Masatek, it uses because it probably came from a time that didn't have those things. So it borrows the language. Like in Masatek, a burro is a burro and a pencil is a lapi, which is close to lapis because Masatek didn't have pencil, so they just took the Spanish word for pencil. You know what I mean? And, and that's pretty much, and then, then I will get up and dance and at a certain point, the spirit will say light the candle and when the candles lit if i have someone there that i'm part of a healing with or other medicine people that's the point where we 
go at it as a group. And then typically the candle blow, burns down and it, when it's right at its base, I'll catch and breathe in that and hold that last frame, flame and say Ninashkatachili to it. And every time after that, I black out. I just black out and I wake up sometime in the morning. Only once in my entire life did that not happen. And it was the last time I did a Velada. And I never fell asleep at all. And on a certain level, I believe Dishitu did that on purpose because I'm in ghost dance ceremony 24 seven at this point with the epidemics and everything going on. It did not bring me out of ceremony. It purposely left me in ceremony. 